And now, the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. I was trying to do my Rage Against the Machine impression, but I can't, it can't be all me. I don't know what he's saying. Oh, when the mic cuts on? It's one of those things you do it where you hide under the volume of the song for your It just sounds like a cartoon sneeze. You're Zach De La Roja. And then this part. And a ride be the rhyme of the unheard. Man. Let it roll, though. Great. One of your best decisions on songs. A good one. Yeah. It's up there with, I think, Tool Sober, obviously. Uh, I have 35 a year, so they come into my head. Really? So, yeah. You keeping a list? Uh, we should do a tournament style next no, year. No, because I feel like there's always something else going to come along. Should we let it? Right now, I would absolutely say the intro to that Cypress Hill Band of Gypsy song. Yeah. It's, to me, nonsensical uh, Arabic uh, yammering, but it's just the awesomest buildup. But that's what it would be I told today. You, yeah, yeah. That was like when I lived above that Indian restaurant. You walk in and hear that music. You don't know what they're saying. Just says in a, it's just set in a cool. Yeah. Hanya, hanya, and it's got a hard beats that, behind. Like, hard beat behind was pretty awesome. Yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, Mia did that with um, Bad Girls. The, you're a bad girl. You're a bad girl. You're a sticky bad girl. I'm a sticky bad girl. So sticky. Hey, it's the bonfire. Comedy Central Radio. <laughs> Serious X795. Hey, start, doing some, do start doing some shoulder punches. Mm. You shut up. I'm sticky. Dan Soder, and that stupid hunk of man so is Big J Ogerson. So sticky. Ugh. Ugh. I am. Uh, we are women reborn on the on the dawn <laughs> of seeing Florence in the machine. It was a real awakening for us, Lou. I have to say, you missed out. What it I miss? was uh, oh crazy times. I it should have been called uh, period the musical. <laughs> yeah, uh, it felt like the way that uh, Florence ran around the stage. It felt like when one of your little cousins makes the whole family watch her sing a song, and they just like jump around, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you're like, "Yay!" And she's like, "Ah!" And it's like you know, kind of, but uh, she also can sing like a mother. For everything in the world, as you need now, a uh, nice hot disclaimer. Her voice is amazing. Yeah. She's a great front woman. Uh, Stage design front is person. cool as shit. Stage design is cool. Her voice is next level, and her performance is, and what she gives for the fans, Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. The music's not my cup of tea. Yeah, music's not your... Uh, it was fun to watch you at certain points. I knew which moments... I think I know you well enough mm-hmm. that I know which moments were the eye rolling back in the head where she's like, oh, it's very easy. I want you to look at everyone and everyone. We are all loved. And you, and I can just I'll feel tell you where she's coming from the intro, eyes. from the opening. After her sec- first song, Hello, she goes... Brooklyn, we are Florence and the Machine. She goes, will you all please dance with us tonight? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's not the thing. Yeah, that's not the thing. I knew that. Oh, my, God, would you guys like to dance with us? Then, I we said, were all very excited that we were about to be at a sit concert, and then she instructed everyone to stand up, yeah. and the 99.8% women that were there, yeah. uh, all obliged. Uh, there was... I was going to say, uh, I leaned over to Ari when she said, we are Florence in the machine. And I said, how cool would it be if Bert just ran out? And he's like, <laughs> hey, yeah. Silver October. He's just not getting drunk. You're like, Bert, Bert's on tour with Florence. That was the machine the whole time. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, is that a Bert? Is that a Bert? Who, she's a... Uh... Like, she would hate me, the human being. She shouldn't, but she would. that's the overwhelming feeling I got at that concert when well, she there was talked the, to the crowd. The yeah. part that made us really laugh was there was a part, she was doing a song off her new album called Patricia, which is dedicated to Patti Smith. And she said, you know, it's about Patti Smith. Well, the beginning and the ending are. The middle is about uh, toxic masculinity. <laughs> and so we were like, me and Ari were joking. We we're like, we just kicked Jay down the stairs. We we're like, sacrifice him. <laughs> we run. <laughs> like, just, you feed on him. Feed on him. He's a man. A bad. Man. Did you hear I do it to you or was I doing it to Christine when she goes, he goes, I like being in a place where there's not toxic masculinity. I was like, suck my dick, you bitch. Make me a sandwich, you dumb whore. Suck you, my dick. That's right, wearing no <laughs> shoes. You shouldn't be out the kitchen. Just bring a 1950s dad into a Florence in the Machine you know concert. What? What, to, so to bring up that moment, what I think the, uh, my grand scheme problem with yeah. the world as it is stands today yeah. is so many people that concert including i believe florence herself would absolutely call me toxic masculinity but they're just aiming their they put the wrong people in their crosshairs for stuff like that i'm mean? not in their crosshairs i'm not popular well, you're enough, out of Flo- you're also out of florence in a machine concert absolutely but i'm just saying the idea that like it's a room full of people one of my biggest gripes i use this example a lot 
is uh, I'm a person who goes like, yeah, dude. He goes, why? We should try having like a broad in the White House. Like get a chick in the fucking White House, man. See what it goes. And they go, a chick, a broad. And you're like, I, I'm just trying to say the funniest word, man. I'm with you. I'm on your team. Yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> but it's like you have to fight through well, all that. It's like you, you're, you, you're, you're upset at the present. Even though the present is what you want, because you don't like the wrapping paper. Actually, like, I want to get into it more. Maybe we can get into it with our guest, even. But yeah. our, our first guest is here. First of two guests we have today coming. Yeah. In. Um, he's coming in the studio now. Hey. Very excited What's to see him. On, man? Oh, hey, how are you? People smoking in here? No, uh, not, not on camera. Not on camera. It's camera when day. The cameras cut. You can. Okay, let me know when the camera cuts because it smells wonderful. Oh yeah. Oh, well, that's probably us as people. Yeah. I, uh, everybody from Blues Traveler and more notably Z Rock, where he played the character of John Popper, <laughs> is my buddy John Popper, everyone. Yeah. Welcome to the bonfire, John Popper. Happy to be here at the bonfire. Yeah. Just getting warm. Just warm on up, dude. Uh, you're on the radio just, tour today, huh? Yes, yes, doing the whole, uh, you know. Is it like you're running for Senate? It's a little like a gangbang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like a Houston one, the sort old of. school one, where they like put ice packs on her and stuff? Yeah, well, no, with no lube at all. Just, <laughs> yeah. just dry. You just have a, a guy in a fucking gas station shirt, shirt coming in, pants. Pantsless. Yeah, yeah. Somebody that looks a little like guilty, but also like you know, gleefully like dazed. Yeah, I think that's who we are in this radio gangbang. That's We're it. the guy that comes in with his t-shirt still on, and we're like, "Oh, big fan of your work." The smell <sighs> of skin and friction. And soft. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, my t-shirt's on, and my and my dick's just coming through the pee hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna show you a gunt at a gangbang with all at- those abs there. Yeah. Oh, let your gunt fly free. Come on, <laughs> I'm gonna be. It old. could be a new sex organ. I'm, I'm gonna- starting uh, therapy on Friday, so we're gonna see if I can get there eventually. Yeah, I like. That. Wait a minute! You're starting therapy. Uh, on can Friday? you believe it? I know. I yeah, about 15 Lord. years late. <laughs> I would say, 15, yeah, most definitely, easily 15, years. easily 15 years late. <laughs> <Yeah>. Absolutely. <laughs> Dan's been uh been pushing me I've for been a while. Pushing him on it. Finally. Yeah. I you know what it took? He had to take me to someone. He yeah. had to take me to see Florence and the Machine last night, yeah. so I realized it was necessary. I go, you got a lot of stuff in there. I go, what's floating around in you, Jay? And he goes, anger. <laughs> Florence and the Machine will do that to people. Yeah. Boy, it sure will. Yeah. I walked out of there, went home, and immediately shaved a Hitler mustache and my pubes okay, it was such a uh, it was such a celebration of woman in yeah. that place they're and, a band of therapists actually. Yeah, as at at about the seventh song in there was a uh, just a procession of dudes just running out of the general admission <laughs> like a, <laughs> and it was like seven to one guys leaving and then like a girl behind going like but i just want to watch one more song Aww, <laughs> there you go i hung in there the whole time while christine danced like a gypsy queen nice by the way jay called that's something. why he hung in there yeah. <laughs> that's why. jay called something on the show yesterday he said whenever christine gets into a song i didn't even say that i just said how long do you think what's the over under and how long before you look over and see christine like this hand clasped not clasped like in a praying motion yeah. in front of her just with her mouth open just like like half am I making the songs and he just he nu- like song two just nudges me he goes, are you doing a faux like, Indian dance is that what no, it is no nope. I don't know what to do with my hands just so like it's the I dream of genie thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. no it's more of a pointing even forward just like like she's trying to shoot her her heart beams to the stage. Yeah, Aww, I'm just trying beams. to accept love. Yes, <laughs> it was a Wiccan ceremony. When you, when you look <laughs> out, you when you're when you're performing and you look out, do you ever see people dancing in the audience? Like, what the fuck is that? Yes, and that's why I try never to look out. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you have to look over their heads? That's yeah, what I do when I'm on stage. Just keep them shut. Just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just wish them into the cornfield. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, blues yeah. traveler show. I bet you get a nice weird, uh, just a ginger girl just ripping loose in the middle of a circle that no one. She's not really dancing to the song itself. Yeah. <laughs> it's all off rhythm. My favorite is from a long time ago, when, you know, back when people would play, you know, dance at our level. Like, yeah. You know, we didn't have a stage yet. <laughs> and uh, there's this, like, hip-hop guy, you know, popping and locking. And then there's this <laughs> uh, hippie chick, you know, doing her, like, weird, ever-expanding <laughs> angles thing. Yeah. And they bump into each other. They've got their eyes closed, and they're all, like, into their thing. And then they bump into each other, like, oh, excuse me. And they're, like, so polite. Yeah. It's like, no, no, yeah. Pardon me. No, yeah. pardon me. Yeah, exactly. It was <laughs> awesome. Oh, let me forgive you. As a robot, they both broke character. It was <laughs> wonderful. I think that was a beautiful. Have you ever moment. seen someone dance and be like, "That guy's in trouble. We need to stop. Like he's fucked up. We need to." Yeah, I think once or twice I've stopped and said, "Wait, no, dude, just stop it. <laughs> just, just stop that." Do you now. have a spritz bottle like a cat? You're like, yes. <laughs> yes. stop it, stop it. You see, do you have earbuds in? What the fuck are you listening yeah. to? Yeah. The what? worst is throwing harmonicas in the crowd because, like, you always invariably throw it to the tiny little girl. Yeah, you know, the little hippie chick who've already created this idea that she's like, oh, she's a little beautiful hippie chick, and two like frat guys <laughs> her head on each side with an elbow to get it, yeah. and you see her go blank, and there's <laughs> nothing in that brain going on anymore, and she goes down and dissolves into the crowd, and here's the scary.
scary part. You never see her again. Oh, like, no. Not even a stain on the floor. Like, what? where did she go? What happened to her? He's like, that her? bitch got fucking blood on my co-ed naked lacrosse <laughs> shirt. Oh, yeah. dude, that sucks. Dude, my, <laughs> my, my Jordans are ruined. Oh, bro. Dude, I love Hook, so I fucking elbowed her. I smashed her for the harmonica. <laughs> that harmonica, that's going to be on the mantle of Phi Beta Kappa. <laughs> oh, right. Dude, I killed a woman to get that. <laughs> it's from that's the P-Man himself. Dude, man, I'm popper threw it out there. I fucking went elbows to head. Ron our test. He goes, you see, that's her teeth marks are still in it from when I jawed her when yeah. she started playing it. I swear to God, I've got had people around with a bloody impression of a harmonica on their forehead. And go, dude, I totally caught one of your harps. Yeah. <laughs> what a what a fun instrument that can turn so violent when you're yes. just trying to give it away. Oh, it's you the can throwing throw star of the it performing is. world. It is the shuriken of the. <laughs> oh, music. that would be badass if you did like a crossover. We're we're uh, obsessed here with what our weapons would be in the post apocalypse. Oh. Oh, I well, feel like let me know what you need. Yeah, I know you're a big. I know you're. I know you're armed to the teeth. I'm saying though, what if uh, we flip it uh -huh. and now you have a bandolier of throwing harmonicas? I which do. you can play them like kind of like you know like <laughs> wait you already have those? Well, I mean you can throw them like yeah. The key is like here's a harmonica. See now, if you look at the front of it, it's kind of almost like a blade. And these are the corners. That's the business oh, end right there. Yeah, you just want to. Yeah. He's giving a nice little flat throw. What if he right just there? ended me right now, just right between the eyes? He goes, and let me tell you something. I'm razor precise with this yes. thing. And yeah, I used to be. And I owe Jay something from 09. <laughs> these, these arms are purely vestigial, yeah. I promise you. By the way, not a bad idea. We have been become obsessed with the apocalypse coming, and we always talking about reasons to make our way out uh, west. Yeah. We always say maybe Dan said he's got something set up. In I've Colorado. Got, I've, got, I've got a some stuff ready. Yes. You know. yeah, but we actually but that's have the, we have to get to Seattle. Yeah. yeah. You're Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, that's a that's a trip. And then we can invade Canada from there. Yeah. Absolutely. I have, a, the woods, I right. have a theory that when Amazon inevitably becomes inevitably becomes Skynet. Right. And they develop <laughs> yeah. Terminator like technology. What do you mean becomes. I mean like <laughs> like Amazon, like Bezos or like They're already those, there. Yeah, they're gonna change yeah. it and be like the new T eight T eight hundred from Amazon. <laughs> it's it can do all your shopping. Once the drones start delivering stuff to you there it is yeah. yeah so my question to you is are you the john connor are you john connor <laughs> no, no i guess and, my question is are you john connor see, uh, my friends never got scared of me because i never stocked up like a million rounds of okay. the same caliber like right, i right. got one for each gun so you know like I'd, I'd run out of bullets soon and really the big strong guy would come and just break my neck and take all my guns so, so that's why our like weapons, we need a force yeah our weapons are he's he has decided to use a bow staff that's good, but like, oh, what are you going to really do with a bow staff? You're gonna I mean, I can't believe you're going to be challenged on your own radio show. I start, about this. I start twirling that thing around. It is going to deter people. It's like a baton. It's like deterrent. A, it's like a cheer <laughs> squad at a, a parade or something. Well, it's not gonna, well, that's that's where we bring in Flag Girl. Yeah, see, she looks in shape. She'd actually do something with a bow. You and me, we're dead. We're, we're food. I'm not. I'm not uh, disagreeing with you. Yeah, but. I will say, in all of our practice post day fights so far, <laughs> I am undefeated against Christine. <laughs> Jay is Jay is very tricky with his bow staff. So while someone ah. might be able to, what he's going to do is he's going to use his brain and his bow staff. That's to our get best you. shot. Is the brain, the tricky? Yeah, like I'm, somehow using it somehow. If weird. the ceilings weren't so low, I would show you how I can pull vault over somebody and yeah. then hit him from behind with it. And I'm coming I would in. Really <laughs> love to see that. I'm Ceiling's coming in. Oh, with, man. Yeah, oh, what are you do? Damn it! Yeah, We've tried. Upstairs. We've tried. We can get into the bowl later if you've got time. After your interview i'm coming at you with two hatchets two hatches is good yeah because so that's a, when you drop the first one yeah like, inevitable oh, yeah and jacob then, is a knife nut so yeah. he uh well oh, nuts, i shouldn't go. say nut after it on radio jacob's a knife lunatic yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're worried about him we hope he's on a list if you uh, want to scare people if you want to scare people you call it your nut knife it's just used for cutting <laughs> yeah. nuts yeah <laughs> i bet he's got one of those a so special got a small one on the end just for splitting uh a little scrotums. curved a little curved just for you know yeah. mazel tov mazel tov mazel tov mazel tov oh man that would call him the moyle that was gonna say what a great Great post-apocalyptic <laughs> name. The Moyle? The Moyle's a really good crime fighter name. Jake the Moyle Jake comes the in Moyle? season three, at least. Yeah. He goes, I go, oh my God, is that Jacob? He goes, I was Jacob. Yeah. Now I'm the Moyle. Batman's scared zombies. of the Moyle, I'll tell you that much. That's <laughs> a bunch of zombies while around holding their dicks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the By the way, now they're all members of the tribe. <laughs> Eep the Moyle. Yeah, I like it, Jacob. How do you feel about that? I That's your new... that. <laughs> yeah, Our love... best move is to acquire a lots of numbing drugs and just lean into the apocalypse and get killed fast. I'm with True. you on that too. I'm not against it either. Like, where's Ground Zero where the bomb lands and just be right under it? Yeah. Don't you go? It's nice to have that in the pocket and go. 
let's live until we like run out of food. Let's see what the apocalypse is like, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I'd give it a shot, but I'd, I'd, want, I'd want like, you know, 60 pounds of heroin for the last. Yes. Know, like, no, I agree. That's time to check out. Goodbye, everybody. If you're going to go, go hard. And yeah. I stay consistent in this. The first thing I'm doing in the apocalypse is buying a carton of cigarettes. I'm back on. Smoking butts. Hell oh, yeah. yeah. I'm right back. Why not? Yeah. It's all. It's That's, that's why I haven't quit. Is that, you know, in smart. case the apocalypse comes. <laughs> yeah. You think you're in that right time? You're like, I, I don't know. It's like a fly ball. You're like, I can just get under it. Be if you just quit smoking in time for the apocalypse. I didn't quit smoking until 2013 because of the premonition of the sky. <laughs> <That's laughs> <That's pretty laughs> like, what difference does it make? That John Mayans Cusack called. movie really put the hook <laughs> I in you. It got to me, dude. <laughs> I really was. I was like, I'm not. Also, the night that you know I was predicted, it was like December 21st, 2012. I was right. at my mom's house and uh, I was still drinking and smoking cigarettes at the time. And her neighbor was over, and her neighbor was hammered. Oh, and no. I remember thinking, if you're the last person I talk to, and the world's destroyed, you two are going to have to fuck if it's. I, oh man, she is. Did you me. go home for Christmas or did you go home to spend a day with your mom before the apocalypse? Maybe I double dipped. What's your problem? <laughs> no, thank Maybe you. I wanted to see my sweet mother. You know, I wanted to Aww. say the the last time I uh, saw John, he did SDR, which he's going to do tonight. Also, the SDR yeah. show. And you had the worst. We did it. Ralph says I got. I said to this day, I have no idea what it was. And Christine could back this up. I don't know. I did like three shots. I sit down. And he goes, I'll be right back. I didn't see him for the rest of the night because he had violent, bloody stools. No, 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 no. Vomit. Vomiting. Oh, you're vomiting? Crazy vomit. And I went in there twice. I came back at one point, but whatever was Ralph. So I, I've known John now since like 2008 or 9. Yeah. And, uh, I feel a lot decade. better that it wasn't shitting. You made it sound like you were had to shit so hard. <laughs> no, it was, it was violent vomit. Was I also fun. like oh, that you've gone up a couple ratchets back in John's book that it's just puke. He's yeah, like, just I thought like, you were just a well, sloppy ass for you. Maniac. I was like, I've never I was seen anybody. For me. I, I felt like I was drugged. It was very bizarre. For three shots of uh, of like vodka, it was cra- something was wrong. I don't you know. Feed yourself. Maybe I don't yeah. know. Whatever it was, but the funny thing that made me laugh was I was in Ralph's bathroom <laughs> yeah. at his house hugging the bowl <laughs> yeah. and I'm listening to the interview go on and I thought it was such a great idea because I'm like I know John so it would be fun to interview yeah, yeah. And, and Ralph obviously knows of John and, and, and is a fan of the music but doesn't know him on any personal level and he just starts going <laughs> I'm holding the hug of the bowl and he goes now in the 90s you know yeah. I was like you <laughs> and uh, totally that. he goes you <laughs> and uh, and the spin doctors kind of thing he goes but uh, he goes, I, was always, I like the blues traveler vibe I wasn't really much on this and I'm going well, Ralph, they're best friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm yelling out from puking. I go, yeah. they're they're best friends, Ralph. Uh, don't say that, <laughs> buddy. That's so uh, weird. You have to hear it go bad. It just yeah. as you're puking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was just hearing Ralph. Just had no idea. I'm like, no. Uh, I just saw uh, Chris Barron at the uh, David Z tribute show they did. Oh, cool. At the uh, cutting room. Uh, I love that bastard. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm now fun can, times. Now I want to poison Jay for a show tonight, so he does have. To do <laughs> just goes. Bad he, twice. He's kind of uh-huh. daring you, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. yeah if I show up again and you are married to the bowl one more time, not a chance. Although the bowl now at the new studio is apparently one of those crazy. Like I still haven't used. I, I won't shit away from home if I don't have to. But it's one of those yeah. heated Ooh. bidet. The whole thing. Lewis keeps asking me to shit there. I can't do it. Do it tonight. We have porn star Brittany Andrews on. You remember her? Nice. No, bring and her you'd up. love her. Okay, Ooh, bring her up. Yeah. yeah. Does that mean she's heavy chested? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't good. know if she's in porn anymore. I think and she porn. still is in porn. But then we also have like I think a naked sword swallower. Yeah, wow. Oh, I want to see that. It's a wild night. Cool. It's gonna be a wild night. It oh, would be a course. shame if Jay was out of commission. Yes, it would be interestingly. Oh hey, Christine, thanks for fun, fun thanks for cleaning it up. But bring the bring a bucket next. You can puke in front of me. I don't want you shitting in front of me. But I puke in front of me. I promise I won't do either oh, tonight. Good lord. She's she great. Large yeah. breasts. Yes, she is. Dan loves her already. Mm-hmm. Big boob guy. Very shaved as well. Nothing to be shamed. Nothing to be ashamed, guys. Boob guys, we're getting we're getting shamed out of uh, liking women. You can mark my words. Oh. We're uh, back though. We're yeah. back. We're strong, you right? Can, oh, yeah, can, we are. You can mark my words, John. Tonight, I will ask her if she is still currently shaved, and then I will ask her to prove it. Prove it. Prove. Wow. Heads up. If you want to come over, guestdigitalnetwork.com. Uh, <laughs> you want to check out the SDR. Guest Digital Network. Like uh, special, special start time, 10 p.m. Tonight. It's going to be a real good one. Good. I'd say check it out. Big titty milkshakes, Dan. <laughs> Tell me that's not something you just click on the video as soon as you a, see it. I have the whole series. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I forgot she was in 12. Wow, it is 12. I, You're right. It's 12. Yeah, they really jumped a shark around nine. I prefer well, the books. Yeah. But a it's lot an of, institution, you know. The magic lives on. It's, brace, it's based on the old Greek series... Uh, 
Brestos Gargantuanos. Wow. Did you ever have a chance to break off a porn star? Um, no, I don't think so. Break off a porn well, star? Well, I mean, that I didn't pay for, no. Yeah. No, no, yeah, no, just like one that was like, uh, it's gotta be... It's gonna be cool to uh, have that rock star thing. No gotta, famous people, no. Well, I, I mean, no. you can't probably tell exactly, but I mean, I remember uh, Shelly from that. You know that uh, was that a cat house thing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. The cat house on HBO. Oh, yeah, with uh, what's his name, Dennis. We, we started hitting it off for a while, but uh, you know, then when she was actually going to come to my house uh, the day before, she said, "I just got back together with my boyfriend, so I'm probably not going to show up." And then she calls me like. I guess that was two days before, and then the day before, she goes, he just stole all my stuff yeah. and left, so I guess I am coming out. Uh, and so then she did come out, and I was thinking, well, I, you know, there's something weird going on with her and this guy, so I'm probably not going to get laid. But, you know, we had a nice, we hung out, and uh, it was nice. And then uh, years later, she calls me up and says, I just need $20,000, so and then I feel like we can be together. What? Really? That was the follow up to the twenty thousand dollars? And I mean like years later. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that was a yeah, call I mean, she made to like uh like every celebrity she's ever met. She just goes yeah. But they were preceded bigger. immediately by like fifty other calls like that. You know, like it was a really uh it was trying to get you a to bit give... maniacal calls. You twenty know, like, grand? She'd been up for a while, I yeah. think. It was one of those kind of You lose sleep, you really lose perspective. Yes. Yeah. She, she goes, goes she's going through her phone like who I pop or I goes, I'll ask him for twenty grand if he wants to be with me forever. She, she's just in a like car that. at a gas station. Uh, she goes, Should I call yeah. him? I'll do it. I don't know. Yeah, hey, you know, twenty grand and we can be together. No, and then and then like the fifteenth call, you know, she she's having this conversation by herself. So you're like, you know, I think if I'm gonna like get the t you know if I'm really go if we're gonna really do this then I think I might need more than twenty you know like yeah. she needs a car and a ride like, and I can give you some side stage passes for Horde Festival yeah so. what do you need <laughs> and she goes that's literally all I want I heard ask for the moon ask for the stars you get the moon I'll yeah. tell you what at Horde Festival uh, oh I never had a chance to go to it but uh, I would have loved to because I'll tell you what would never happen there you'll never see Shaggy Two Dope whiff a drop kick on Fred Durst oh yeah <laughs> wait somebody drop kicked Fred Durst oh uh, watch the can you that video Back up. We watched oh. it yesterday on the show. Shaggy Two Dope from Insane Clown Posse tried to uh, drop kick Fred Durst when his back was turned, and it did whiffed. not go well. Oh, have, when you've see? had, when you drop, when you commit to a move like that yeah. and and don't hit it, all you've done was jump in the air and fall. <laughs> have you yeah. seen? See, I want to. This is probably what. So the first angle is what you have to see. So this that's Fred in the front, and uh, here he comes, miss. <laughs> and the security oh. got it. Have you? And that's us angle. in the apocalypse. You can see how little he moves. What's with Fred Durst's uh, beard? Oh, uh, it's a whole fisherman. It's, it's a new like, thing now. He's it's a like a uh, pro bass shop gone uh, Oakland. <laughs> he's called, uh, yeah, oh. Lost in the Jungle Gilligan. Yeah. Good Lord. But see, that's us in the apocalypse right there. We're the failed drop kick of Fred Durst. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we would be doing. Dan's Fred Durst. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, wow. I go, did John Popper just try to drop kick me from behind? We laughed about this yesterday, but it is funny when you commit. John Five, the guitarist, does that too. And Wes <laughs> Borland, when you commit to a real like oh. face paint, whole kind of thing, and then something real happens on stage. Yeah, or something like someone in the audience gets hurt. Even you just got to go with concern. Look, like, are you okay? Yeah. Right. You're painting like a kitten. <laughs> yeah. You just got back from Great Adventure. Yeah, was that is that guy cool? What's going on? Is everything yeah. all right? Everything all right? Okay. What's going on? Oh, you guys. I was you're thinking. Right? I was thinking about that when it's like a satanic <laughs> metal band when they're like, and the Dark Lord, and something bad happens. Like, hey guys, not cool. Yeah, not hey. cool. Hey guys, guys, can, oh, come on. DeRose always pointed that out. Show here, guys. Why did DeRose see Marilyn Manson for the first time? Someone threw a bottle on stage, and he really made us think about it. Like, he really, like, oh, got, no. like he really was like I don't understand why you were just like just the fact that earlier that night you were putting a contact lens in your one eye yeah. right. and you just got to like slicing yourself open and so yeah. it's like, like whoa guys you really can't understand why they throw a bottle put on a show here yeah. man you're gonna die hey, guys guys people, people, stop it I'll wait I'll wait people I'll wait turn the light on who's that get, get him out of there security <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We just broadcasted live from a Marilyn Manson show, and it got. Uh -huh. We did the broadcast, yeah. and then right before the show started, it started the rain, and they ended up canceling the show. And that's what Jacob said. He goes, "Guess the Dark Lord's afraid of a little rain." <laughs> yeah, <right. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it is weird because when you base your whole thing on evil and like bad, like Papa Roach, I worked yeah. security at the uh, Warp Tour, right. and it was right when Papa Roach came out with Last Resort. So they were like the big band on the second stage, and they were playing Last Resort, and a girl was crowd surfing got dropped, and it was like. Uh, 
Oh, cut my... Yeah. Stop. Stop it. Is she okay? Is she okay? <laughs> and it's such a weird vibe. You're like, cut my life yeah. into pieces. This is... These guys, seriously, that that might be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> See, but conversely, now, I'm I'm like a nice guy, so I have to be conservative. Like, what if I was like, eh, fuck her. <laughs> yeah, uh, you just go the other way. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, Marilyn Manson, like, if he misses a show because, like, he has to play through if it's, like, a stomach bug. Yeah. Or you have to have a good PR person to make sure they don't get that's what's out there. Right. He goes, sorry, he goes, uh, emergency meeting with Satan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's just home with, like, leather pants around his knees because there's too much to take him down to take a shit. <laughs> he, like, he was sucking Satan's cock. <laughs> Yeah. The right. sperm has now infected him with yeah. many maggots. He, he can't, yeah, he can't claim exhaustion. He's like, I'm so tired from being evil. Yeah, he can't play tonight because he just doesn't care. Yeah. yeah, I, the Dark Lord, doesn't has a gluten allergy. <laughs> He goes, or he starts getting huge and his makeup's like running into his eyes. He goes, <laughs> can I get a say, ta- say, ah, ah oh, it. that stings. Ah, uh, guys, does someone have a laser pointer out there? Someone got me right in the cornea. <laughs> so last time I saw him live with Christina Tooker, they had a, the camera right up on, looking horrible. The camera was shooting up to him on the podium and uh-huh. on the big screens, he has no idea he's that close up. Boom. He just whips, blows a snot rocket to be like kind of cool, like fuck, yeah. fuck the world, and it just hangs on his lips. Oh, and the whole no. seventy-five thousand people go, oh, <laughs> and yeah. then, uh, and then, and then he goes, and then it cuts back to him, and he's doing this. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. There he goes. Oh, it's right there, right at the tip. I gotta get it off. You know what I've learned is if somebody, if you learn your flies down, don't look at it because we're doing Red Rocks. It's sold out, and uh, my my girlfriend at the time is like, what? she's like coming on stage, and I'm like, well, have you lost your mind? She's like, your fly is down, and like people are starting to chant in sections of the crowd because it was like a big <laughs> open vagina, uh, and I, I, I do the huh, and that's when everyone goes. <laughs> oh. Big eruption of the crowd, like he noticed. <laughs> he's he's so and then you tell everyone who didn't know what was going on. Oh yeah, look, it flies down. Yeah. It's like you're pointing it out. It's awesome. There's no worse instrument to have your fly down to the, the harmonica because you're yeah. totally away from your. Yes, <laughs> like, it's, it's, all, it's completely up here. Yeah. Down it's like really just like showcasing. Exactly. Yeah. It's just there's no guitar to hide behind. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Are I have a try? guy whose job it is is to make me... Uh, Do you have to take a break? Does, does John have to leave? No. Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, okay, maybe we want to hang out with our next guest. It'll be we, pretty do fun. We, do we get to go off camera for a second? Yeah. Uh, we do get to go off camera for a yes. second. We are going on our first live break, everyone. We're hanging out with John Popper. It's the bonfire. Hoot, hoot. Awesome. Oh, please give me a deal. Hey, please in many me bedrooms, you're... bedtime is, I don't know, complicated. Damn right Especially as the weather begins to cool while one person sleeps soundly, me. The other is either freezing or way too hot. Christine, no, actually, probably the other way around. It's probably the other way around. You're the one that's fussy? I was going to throw under the bus, but it's probably, I am the fussy one. Well, Bowl & Branch, makers of the world's most comfortable sheets, loved by three U.S. presidents, are offering their luxury flannel bedding for a limited time at BowlandBranch.com. They're unbelie- unbelievably soft, warm, and breathable, so everyone stays the right temperature. Our flannel sheets come in 14 stunning patterns and colors, so you're guaranteed to find a style you'll love. I like that they have it as uh, us. We have 14. Come in and see our 14 stunning patterns. Dude, we're a part of the Bowl & Branch family. We're- do I have like stock in this place? Then I didn't know about it, dude. I don't know if you know this, but Bowl Jacob, and read into that. Do we have stock in Bowl and Branch? Yeah, I want to sell right now because it's it's so good. Mark. I believe in the company. They give you a thirty night risk free trial, what and whatever I? you do, don't wait. Though last year the flannel sheets sold out in just a few weeks. So go to bowlandbranch.com today for fifty dollars off your first set of sheets plus free shipping with promo code Bonfire. Again, it's fifty dollars off plus free shipping right now. Bowlandbranch.com promo code Bonfire. Bowling Branch, so many bees. A lot of bees. Bowlandbranch.com Spelled B O L L and branch.com. What do you think the promo code is, Dan? Bonfire? You knew it. I knew it the whole time. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Yeah! It's the bonfire, Comedy Central Radio Series XM95. Big J Okerson, Dan Soder. Hi. Uh, John Popper is going to join us back again. He's downstairs ripping a butt. He's ripping a butt. He left us. 
He left the harmonica in his place, though, which is pretty it's, badass. It's weird listening to this song and then looking at the harmonica, and you're like, is it going to wake up? <laughs> <laughs> is this thing haunted? Also joining us in the studio, uh, his new film, Eighth Grade, is out now that he directed. Uh, so cool to watch all these things happening for him. It's Bo Burnham joins the studio. Whoa. Thanks for having me, guys. We've been wanting to have you on for a while, yeah, so it's awesome. I'm it's, glad to be here. Yeah, dude. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah. You've known Jay a long time. Yeah, since I was seven, 17, I think, 16, right? 16 or 17. Because it, it, it was before Just for Laughs that year, so it was like maybe June or May or April. And I was there with my... We went to you went, London. We were, yeah, we went to London to do the World Stands Up. World Stands Up. And was that a festival? What was it? No, it was a weird... It was like a TV show. Like a British... Premium blend or something. Okay. Yeah. It's a good way to put it. We, we get it. everyone from the world, but and they're mostly cool. Americans. But it was one of those cool things where they send like a camp out of like American comics. Oh, cool. But it was a weird mishmash. Yeah, it, <laughs> it would have been super strange. <laughs> Did they give you uh, like uh, like Olympic tracksuits? That would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, which is like best of the yeah, best. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Like the rider cover so it would have been incredible. <laughs> yeah, that would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, if you guys yeah. got announced as the team. But it was us. It was. Me, you, Tom Wilson, who plays Biff in Back to the Future, and actually yeah. pl- was on a show I made a few years later. Uh, Jamie Kilstein, Joe Coy, yeah, who was just like destruction at that point, probably still is, but like, oh yeah, 2007's Joe Coy was just just murdering, just lighting. He was shit murdering. He's just knocking Joe all those Coy. gross teeth out of their face with laughter. One of the funniest <laughs> moments: Tom Wilson, who plays Biff, yeah, most of his sets about being Biff, and then back in the green room of the show, Joe Coy goes. I thought a pretty fair question. Oh, incredible! He, yeah. goes, he goes, "What's your, uh, he goes, what's your favorite incarnation of Biff that you played? You know, the West one or the whatever." Great question. Great question. And man, he just went, oh, come on, man. And just like closed his thing and like like huffed out of the room. Like, and it was like, what did I say? I go, I guess he doesn't like talking about being Biff off stage. <laughs> no, I remember the the British tour guy that brought us around ask, going, you know who you look like? He goes, you look like a combination of Biff and like an older actor oh. and it was just like and it was like so like it was so and I very, think that came hot on the heels a, of that a dash of desperation just, oh, just make him you feel look terrible. like if you were another incarnation of Biff but if he was worn down and sad and he's like oh I was Biff and he's like oh. yeah so I think Joe was coming off the heels of that yeah Tom's that's, a good man do you recall uh, oh no he's a great guy we got along very well um, did you uh, did you, call him did you recall my father did you, I do recall your father yeah, so you're 17 when you're so he had, yeah, yeah, 17 he was, he was, uh, I had to have my dad escorted yeah. so your dad what's that like getting into comedy you're going to tape a show in England and you're mm-hmm. like dad has to come with you because I remember like getting dropped off at school you're like mom fucking leave me alone yeah yeah it's pretty rough and like that was the third or fourth time I had ever performed yeah, live because okay. I had come from like the internet so there's some awful like it literally my third or fourth set ever is taped. TV. And on. It's like it's like horrifying. Yeah. Um and you're seventeen. Yeah, it's Fuck, brutal. Dude. The way though everyone was pulling for each other though, <sighs> yeah. it really became like a weird yeah. team. It was uh, so I remember I remember the songs, the, the dictator taught. Yeah. Little Hitler. Yeah, yeah, aged and, uh, beautifully. And it was uh, <laughs> aged perfectly. <laughs> really, really coincides with Very the Very smart, moment. I thought, for it, but we were yeah. everyone was like so cheering for everything. Yeah, yeah. Finesse Mitchell did a, a fucking a Prince impression, and I stood up like I was oh, fucking at the yeah. Apollo. I'm like, yes. yeah! See, that's what we need more. We need more international uh, comedic competitions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You did really well, though. I, I remember you completely riffed on the night, and it was like beautiful. Oh, thank you. That was, you uh, were on like last, I felt, from all of us. Yeah. So you went on final for the Americans. Yeah. Final from the Americans. <laughs> the Americans. Big J. Do you Anderson. recall the warm-up show? We did? This is one of my favorite stories. Yes, the warm-up yes. show we did at the Country Club? Yes. I've told this story, I don't know, on this show before. I don't think you have. But, uh, but as a, I don't want to say her name, but there's a comic. We haven't said her yet, so I'm okay with that. The, the, there's a, a, a female comic yeah. who, in her jokes... She just does a lot of like, like what? Hmm. I said it. Who said it? What? Yeah, I know you know. But I go. Uh, she. We would this warm up set at like a country club. It was a decent show though. Like I remember like, everyone like having a pretty good time. And yeah. She was on, but they just, she just didn't catch him. Happens. Yeah. You know I mean, she didn't catch the crowd. Yeah, it happens when you're in Milton Keynes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, apparently, he does, she doesn't do about her local. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the country club. It was just the funniest heckle I've ever done. With all that, I think when she started getting nervous, there was a bunch of like it was just an over the top amount of the yeah. huh what who said it I said. <laughs> a guy in the audience, there's like a 
a hubbub in the audience, <laughs> and one guy gets up with like starts like a quarterback. He's calming everybody. He's like, he's like Hi, I'll say, I'll guide that. Yeah. And he goes, Excuse me, miss, uh, who are you talking to? Yeah, <laughs> and it was so just the most deflating thing I've ever seen. Like, yowch. <laughs> I mean, the British just cutting bone deep. Yeah, it's a long it's a tube ride home, rubbing back of a person, oh, going, yeah. Hey, come fuck these fuck people. Him. Stupid <laughs> England. Fuck it. They don't even get That's comedy. why we revolted. Yeah. Fuck them. Comedy's an American thing, dude. Where is American yeah. stand up comedy? America. Why do you think they brought us all out here? Because they don't know how to do it themselves. Right? And she goes, I mean, I was asking a question. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be so bad. Excuse me, Paul, me. Who in the fuck are you talking to? And he goes, oh, isn't that delicious? Who said what, uh, miss? Uh, I don't really believe you are speaking to anyone in general. Are you babbling? Are you a crazy person? I think she's babbling. She, I, she is. Oh, she's a crazy. Oh, they do it like fucking Manchester. Just fucking hard wearing. Like, oh, I think she went nuts. <laughs> hey, dude, that's got to be tough because that's there's some heckles. The worst heckle I ever got was at the cellar. This it was like probably I want to say two months after I got past the cellar. It's Friday night. I was so excited, and this girl got up and she was saying something to her boyfriend. I go, Ah, oh, Miss, is there a problem? She goes, I saw you two weeks ago. You're doing the same jokes. I went, Hot oh, you oh Fucking stuck me right in the soul. Playing lights. the record backwards. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. 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 <laughs> so people got tattoos. <laughs> Fuck. And then Esty walked in with Bill Maher, and they sat, and I was just like doing. Uh, he was like just at the cellar for some reason. Me and you smoked a joint right after my set in the stairs. Well, and Bill Maher walked out and he went, Hey, great stuff. And he oh. walked out, and you go, Oh, nothing on mine because you haven't gone up yet. <laughs> but that was that night, and I remember that because it was such an accurate heckle. Because she was basically, No, oh, the, the how she finished it, she goes, I heard those jokes and I was here two weeks ago, but go ahead, do them. And I was like, <laughs> You bitch. And in front of Bill Maher, the king of turnover himself. Yeah. <laughs> it's like He's brutal. He's got new rules every, <laughs> every week. week. This guy is just coming up with rules. When's the last time you performed both for not your audience, like at all? Oh, that's a that's a great question. I mean, I don't like. Do you do pop ins? Like I, I a little bit. I mean, I haven't really done it in a few years. Sure. But like, I'll do like Largo and stuff in Los Angeles. But I wouldn't call that not my audience. Right. You know what I mean? Sure, it's like, sure, it's sure. the friendliest crowd you could John ever. Pop, John Popper back in the room. Got it. Smoked a butt. Feeling good, John? Bo Burnham? Bo Burnham, John Popper? Hi, John. John, you were in my uh, girlfriend's movie, The Meddler. Yes, that's Lorraine, right. She wrote and directed that. Oh, that you was so awesome. You were wonderful She really appreciated you being Thanks here. Thanks a lot. Wonderful. It was really cool. Yeah. It was so fun to yeah, get to do. He he got he did a set at the uh, in in a ferry. Yeah, yeah. We were in the uh, boat, and uh, it was really cool. Our dog basically intimidated Susan Sarandon's dog. Yes. Oh, yeah. That'll teach um, that bitch. Yeah, her dog was really nice and well-behaved, and our dog was a scruffy little homeless it. dog. Yeah, and that was a proper turn, Jay. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally, you nailed it. It's okay. Yeah. Two female dogs fighting at each other. You Challenge can't call me feminazis. Yeah. Bring it. <laughs> Isolate the audio. Take a run at us. Yeah. Jay finally had it in context. Bring it, people. Uh, Take a run at us. We were talking about hecklers, like uh, the ones that hurt, because um, I was saying a woman got up during one of my sets at the Comedy Cellar and was like, oh, I heard these jokes two weeks ago, but go ahead and tell them, and I just oh, froze up. How nice. Yeah. Have you ever been heckled? I'm uh, starting to do like a solo show where I actually start to get my little stand-up rocks off. Yeah. And the right. cool part is if I start to suck, I got a song I yes. can go to. So <laughs> oh, it's always heard. handy. And uh, the, the thing I get run into is that I, it's such a personal little show that people feel like they can talk. I've loved you since <laughs> forever, and there's this time. I got to tell you. And like you you don't understand. There's a bunch of people standing around waiting for you to tell the story. And so it's hard to shut somebody down who's telling you nice things. Yes. Yeah. Positive you know? are difficult. Yeah. And then I, I mentioned something about uh, how like a uh, quail uh, I talk about this song we do called Sham Pipple which is uh, Fred Sanford's drink of uh, ginger ale and ripple and how we were, wrote a song about it and we were trying to uh, recreate it but the ripple was banned along with Quaaludes in the fuck you act of 1978 hell yeah <laughs> and, uh, you learn something new every day you know, I learned that fucking, <laughs> fucking Jimmy Carter and somebody in the audience <laughs> goes uh, peanut farmer motherfucker and somebody goes off about Jimmy Carter for like five minutes like yeah he ruined our economy and like you know, the Jimmy Carter's ex-lover is in the audience and is really upset about <laughs> this and you know i mean i'm sure he was busy and he just he would have called he would have called you back i'm sure and like you start going off on that guy and that's free material i want i do wish we went to see that florence and the machine show last night i wish i would have seen her get a real heckling would have been hilarious because she's saying such unheckleable things yeah unless you're just an asshole yeah you well, have I, 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 I wouldn't actually do the heckles i could write them for somebody well, what, for what sure. things would she sing like i bet i could heckle it 
Um, well, there was a loud technical issue. The microphones went crazy. Uh, Be phone to the machine. I'll heckle you. This is great. So it went. Mm, and she goes, is everybody here that? He goes, I'm always told that's just the sound of angels. You're fat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It works any time. I'm going <laughs> to yeah, yeah, right. yeah. guess that's just, that's just a good fastball. Yeah. That's just, just fucking just heat bam. down the plate. It's, Quick, it's right there. And any girl prefer. <laughs> Watch, I'll do, uh, I'll do a different heckle because, for... Uh, yeah, I, I, Pick someone, Christina Aguilera. <laughs> I'm a genie in a fat. <laughs> I mean, I feel like this is just six. Are you saying it's the duct tape of insults? <laughs> <laughs> it's the duct tape of insults. That's good. Yeah. You've no, aged. Like, yeah. oh. You're <laughs> showing your age in your face. Your skin is loose. <laughs> loose skin. You caused 9 11. Oh, that's a, that's a tough uh, short total shift. Oh, I guess the question. <laughs> I guess the question. Here, you know. I guess the question here, Bo, is why lock it down when you just directed a feature film? <laughs> wow, nice. Why would you lock it down? She must be amazing. Now, I this is a chance to really this. score some points. Oh, why wait. wouldn't you lock it down? I right. say, why would you lock down? You said you have a girlfriend. Oh, now, this person. Yes, yeah. you know, yes. Sell it, baby. Come on, this is your chance. Right. Um, yeah, I usually don't disclose her name. So I'll oh, give no, her you don't first say her name. name. I'm no. just saying it's um, like, we'll no, no, I already did. The love of your of, life. Yeah, you know, uh -huh. it's uh -huh. it's a good era to be in a long term relationship. Yeah, no, but she's special. This individual person is unique. Oh yeah, she's incredible. Yeah, you know, and, I probably, and she was directing and writing before I did, so I sort of got into it's, it because of her. Oh, it's Rose, oh, Rose McGowan. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She has her I'll ups and downs. We've had some real, rough, we've had some real <laughs> trials. Uh, you got off camera, she's a doll. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's, yeah. an that's an act. That's an. Is Ric Flair always Ric Flair? Yeah, a little bit. That might be the most romantic thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Beautiful. It's it is a good time to be in a long term relationship. Yes, yeah. yes. And I, I, I was in a five year relationship from sixteen to twenty one. Wow. Was single for a month and then have been in a five year relationship since. Like not even intentionally, I guess. I mean, it must just be in my bones. But yeah. so when all this stuff is coming up, like I was, I was never single on the road. Yeah. I was uh -huh. loyal. Yeah. So it's uh, wonderful to watch this stuff from the sidelines. It's like, wow. I, I'm saying it's comedians are taking down. And I, there's, you have a pool on your fridge. People are like, Joe DeRose is next. I know. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. I, I luckily don't. I mean, because if I had been a single 17, <laughs> yeah, 19, no. 20 year old man oh, hell yeah. touring around, oh, yeah, you're just trouble. an asshole to one person. Yes, not yes, a plethora exactly. of people. Yes, yes. Yeah, you didn't spread it out. It would be funny if you had like a Mayan moon calendar for whoever's going to get taken down next. <laughs> he goes, flip it. This is going to surprise you. Ari Spears. Go, oh, <laughs> didn't see that one. Yeah. It's funny. You do, you do comedy, music, uh, also, and you're young, good-looking guy. Like It had to be like, there had to be aggressive fans like, whipping it at you at times. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it was very interesting to go through the system of performing at colleges from being younger than them to their yeah. age to now older than them. And mm -hmm. then I would say like there hasn't been a more rapid change in the demeanor of college kids so yeah. when you in started, the last eight years. Because you know? yeah. when you started performing, you're younger than them. You're yeah, going 17, to perform 18, these, yeah. these college freshman. kids. And I remember when you're uh, when you're in high school and you look at a college kid, you're like, you're a man. Oh my God. You're yeah, a man yeah, and a woman. Yeah. And then, I'd have been scared shitless to go in front of uh, people older than me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Older mm -hmm. than me. Younger people, you're always a little annoyed. You're like, yeah. ah, yeah, fuck yeah. you. Oh, you yeah, of time. course. What do you think? But when you yeah. see older people, you're like, so you guys like uh, drive cars? <laughs> you guys have sex with people and stuff? Yeah, what's Taxes? it like? Taxes? What's yeah. that like? Taxes? And, and now they're children. I mean, now you go to college... Yeah, and, and I think uh, it's not because if you watch like Annie Hall, rest in peace. Yeah, if you but if you watch Annie Hall, like he performs at a college at that point, and they're all like in like burgundy <laughs> yeah, unscrewed yeah. blazers, Smoking cigarettes, and yeah. now they have like now now they have like blue eyeliner, and they all look like they're leaving like a middle school pep rally or something. I mean, like you actually see <laughs> the best thing about performing at colleges. It's always like there's always like forty kids on the student board doing nothing, and yeah. four like octogenarians setting up twelve hundred <laughs> chairs in a gymnasium. They were always doing nothing, though. They just looked like they were doing something. Yeah, I, I want to think, though, that like in the 70s and the 80s, college kids at least had, you know, some of them were going to war and yeah, shit. Yeah, so, well, that's the whole point, is most of them were on the, they're like, hey, dude, we're kind of lucky we're here, because if not, we go to Nam. <laughs> so, some of them still go to war, you know. Yeah. There's still plenty of wars out there you can go yeah. to. ROTCs. The question yeah, a lot is, of Brandeis kids. At what point? Yeah, at war. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think a lot of liberal <laughs> arts college kids being like, <laughs> yeah. I gotta get in the muck. Yeah. 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 I, love, I could go get in the shit now. Yeah. I love how hackneyed it's become the college introduction from the person bringing you to the stage. It's oh. such a, everyone just knows. Oh. They say your name, everything, they say the wrong stuff first always. Yeah, it's their name uh, first. comedian. Yeah. Jay Okerson's coming out. He's been on. <laughs> they start selling your credits after that, and they go, Well, don't forget so, about yeah. 
<laughs> you can't forget about yeah. the, the improv group that destroys before you with like <laughs> specific material yeah. about the dean. Oh, dude, I followed. Trust me, I've done clubs in Long Island where the feature just does local stuff the entire time. And you're like, I don't know where any of those towns are. Oh, the college is even worse than that because yeah. it's always. Like, well, we have a student here who's really funny, so he goes up there and yeah, he's just yeah. murdering. He goes, you know, you ain't gonna catch Larry without his goddamn uh, yellow sweatpants on. <laughs> 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 he goes, I go. I said, I'm drunk. I'm not stupid. I don't live in Turner Hall. <laughs> Oh, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> like this guy's fucking murdering. Yeah, I go out there and be there. like, I'm waking up with back pain a lot lately. What the fuck's this dude talking back about? Pain. <laughs> There's a professor. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Now that's my shit. <laughs> Acid reflux. Hello. It's my jam. What point did you performing? Did you feel like you were at the same? Like you looked out and saw people your age? It was well. I mean, that, that, that was happen, happening during it. Yeah, you know, but like I, I took a year off and went back when I was twenty four, and I was like, okay, these are kids. And yeah, like these yeah. are kids, and I was a kid that, at that time. But now that I'm twenty eight and I've been going back, it, I truly feel like, yeah, you gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. when, I yeah, to yeah, college, when I used to go to college, you're like, are we staying in like a hotel nearby in yeah. case something pops? Now I'd be like, I get the fuck out. Of here. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it I'm feels, sorry. Is there a back door yeah, out? Loaded. We, I mean, it's different for bands because you know we crash at their dorms sometimes, and you know now like dear God, we're not crashing at anybody's dorm. <laughs> I'm 51 yeah. now. Yeah, Screw right. that. He goes, is this futon? What are you, nuts? Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. What, what's the age where you're like going to one of those parties and you realize I'm the oldest dude here. I need to leave now. Oh. Man, at any college party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At this it would point, be funny to go back now. Go, uh, what was the age? I'd say for me it was like, I don't know, 35 or something where you're like, you're there to go drink the free beer and you're like, wow, <laughs> I need to leave. This isn't good. 35 at a college party. I remember yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, I don't know, like 32. I don't know. They feel young now. Now. I don't. I don't know why. I think. Yeah. I Everybody think it hungry? is generational. This specific generation. Yeah, I think feels it is very young. Yeah. I was. I was 27, and uh, I was at the University of Maryland at Baltimore, hammered, and I was like, "What's well, going? This feels weird." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it does feel You're weird. You're too old when you go, uh, everybody hungry? Order 30 pies on my Amex. And they go, you could buy all that? Yeah. yeah. I, I got to get out of here. <laughs> you got a yeah. lot of friends. Yeah. Though, yeah. <laughs> this is bad. But actually, you walk by the football beer. teams, and then you're a child. I mean, you go to UCF, and then you feel 12 years old That's around your brother's friends. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, so. yeah it's gigantic. College people. football is the one thing where recently, now that I'm 35, all of them look like children. Now when I watch college football, because for a while, even when they were younger than me, I was like, these guys are football players. They're grown. They're huge. And huge, then, gigantic men. Yeah. yeah. And now it's, I remember it was Sam Bradford, the quarterback <laughs> formerly of the Oklahoma Sooners, played for the Eagles. Now he's on the Cardinals. He was on the team for a minute. Bring up Sam Bradford. He has such little kid face oh, that I yeah. remember when he played at Oklahoma, I was like, this guy looks like my friend's little brother, Cody. Like that. Oh, Even yeah. how you see what I mean? You're like, yeah. hey, little guy. And he's just a but, fucking. Uh, wait, go back to that other picture. And actually, in that picture, it looks like he stuck his head in one of those cardboard cutouts of a, of a Rams uniform. Because so he came and he goes, all right, Dad, do me. He goes, one day I'm going to play for the Rams. His goes, neck is right, wider Sam. than his head. Yeah. He's crazy. got a little kid face. Wow. You hey. see that with college football players sometimes where you're like, this guy. Like, But then look, bring up Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield looks older than me. But he's like 22. Oh, uh, there we go. But you like sometimes you see a guy, and you're yeah, it's just him in a helmet. That doesn't yeah. Really help. Well, I think that was the that was the age thing for me with all of it was when all yeah. athletes now yeah, are yeah. significantly younger than me. Yeah, and Bo, yes. you're in the age of like a in their prime athlete getting ready to start coming down. Yeah, you know but I mean? I like yeah, but I still feel like significantly younger than LeBron, who's yes. old but still like. Well, how old's Tom Brady, for instance? Well, he's forty-one. Yeah. Forty-one. So, so like, he's your age. Your, he's my, yeah. That's your maximum. But, age. but he's he's a, a walking miracle, and all anyone talks about is how old he is. Yeah, right. But, you know, due to his due to his fitness and his diet, like his legendary leadership. oldness, right there. Yeah, yeah. I, I think great. twenty-eight is probably the latest you get as an athlete before people stop start talking about how old you are. Yeah, thirty. Yeah. I'm at thirty-five, where I'm like, does he have a season left? Does he have yeah. two seasons? It's gonna be great when Giselle keeps going with age, though. Eventually, they're gonna look, they're gonna look like if uh, like the old Rose from the Titanic hooked up with Leonardo DiCaprio, <laughs> <Yeah>. See, <laughs> the one that dropped the heart in the ocean and back so, into the water. So, so, how many of these guys are fifty uh, one? Yeah. None, none of them. None of them. If they're playing, I'll golfers. tell you, chess champions. It's yeah. all gonna be yeah, long snappers and kickers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what you got. Janikowski's. Got. Look at Baker Mayfield. Look. Yeah, he yeah. looks older than me. That, that beard looks way older than he does. Uh, you yeah, shave. You, you shave. You you shut your guys' mouth. You better say I'm old. Is that how you see yourself, <laughs> I'm feeling old. I'm feeling old. I need you guys to pet me up right fucking now. This guy's younger than me. He goes, significantly. <laughs> it looks like he's your son. <laughs> Damn it. Come on, guys. Yeah. It's when you can't join the army. It's like when you, if you tried to join the army, like, 
Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Okay, he looks older than... Yeah, if I wanted to, I'm going to go fight for my country. He goes, sit down, Pop. Yeah, stop. Yeah. No, you can't. He looks older than Sam Bradford, and he's not. How about that? Give me that. Well, Sam sure. Bradford well, college looks like a early child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not standing next to each other. You're I'm sorry. Dan's face. resume says he's able to play 18 to 61. <laughs> 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 I got range, motherfucker. Yeah, range. No, makeup. no makeup. It's all my expression. I go, it's all my thoughts. <laughs> if I think young, I'll look young. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're we, only as young as you feel, right? Yeah. I know we, yeah, gotta take, we have to take a second break there, I know, for our advertisements. Oh, sorry, um, guys. Yeah, are you able to hang out, Bosto? Oh, yeah. Nice, John. I think I got to go. You got to go, buddy? I'm going to go wash my my junk because uh, I'm going to see you later tonight. Hell yeah. Right. John Popper, thank um, you for coming on. Brand new album. Don't walk out because I got to oh, tell you where to go tonight. Yeah. Well, blue, oh yeah, you got to listen uh, to him. Blues point. Traveler has a brand new album out. Hurry up and hang around. It's actually out Friday, October 12th. So Absolutely. Check him out. You got to hit the tour. You're hitting tour? Yes. We start up on Friday and we keep going till Thanksgiving. Friday where? Uh, Montclair, New Jersey at the Wellmont. Yeah. Ooh, what go time, buddy? I might go. Oh, please. Uh, I think we hit around 8, 8 o'clock. I don't know if you recall. I always like to tell the story of what I've learned now as someone who has people asking them for tickets. Yeah. Poor John goes, you want to come to my show tonight, the Highline Ballroom? I called him like two hours later like, yes, I'm bringing 13 people. He was like, <laughs> I'll do it, man, but that's not really a cool yeah. request. I go, isn't it? And I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> boy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll always apologize for that. Love you, John uh, Popper. We're hanging out with Bo Burn. Them. We'll be right back. It's the bonfire. See you guys. Oh, hey, campers. We just got hooked up with awesome new security cameras for Blink Home Security. Listen, we've talked about these enough that you know we're not joking. Uh, I My mom uses them at her apartment so I can monitor my mother's movement like she is a prized panda at a zoo. That's what I call her, Trish the Panda. Um, Blink Home Security Cameras. It syncs right up with your smartphone and works right out of the box. Wire-free and runs on batteries that last years, so there's no installation. And keep an eye on everything when you're out. Jay, you have them. Did you give them? You gave them to Gas Digital, so they use them for their security. Yeah, also our friend Wayne uses them. Yeah. Fantastic. No subscriptions, no contracts. And here's the deal we got you. Three Blink cams from way less than the other guys charge, plus an extra 15% off. Visit BlinkProtect.com slash bonfire. BlinkProtect.com slash bonfire. I mean, that's a lot. Blink protect. Blink protect. dot com. Blink protect. Blink Blink protect. Blink protect. Blink protect. Blink protect. dot com slash J. Help me out. It's bonfire, right? Is, yeah, yeah, I think I said it so many times. And now back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. That harmonica was right next to me. Suck my buddy, dick, buddy. Mr. Wilson. Yeah, my yeah, take yeah, it yeah. home. <laughs> Ah, I have the power! By the way, take it home. I promise you, he's got 40, 40 on him. Boy. Man, I, I didn't look at his lips. <laughs> he goes, no, no, no. There's coke in it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, John Popper's fucking harmonica. What a win. Take that home, buddy. It's the Bonfire. Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soda. That's Big J. Okerson. Bo Burnham joining us. His movie, Eighth Grade, out now on available Blu-ray, Blu -ray, DVD. Um, on demand? On demand. Not going to lie to you. I haven't seen it, but I'm very excited to yeah, see it. good, man. Got a copy of it, and Eighth Grade was possibly one of the worst years of my life, and I've heard that... <laughs> If you had a tough eighth grade year, this is the movie to see. Yeah, whatever. Black Lou just watched it, loved it. Loved it. Hey, really legit absolutely, took him back to. Uh, loved it. I appreciate, it, man. Thank you. Well, I have very a question. The you girl. Know, we don't have to talk about it. I talk about it all the time. You guys. No, no, I'm sure. But I have a question no, more about working <laughs> with uh, young people like uh. that. Did you find that just ear? Because we always talk mm. when we watch movies. Uh, me, Christina, and Dan, all, we watch movies, and anytime there's a young person acting, especially like the Law and Orders. Yeah. Oh, well, that's like yeah, a victim. Yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah. But you're just like, uh, yeah. no, I mean the kid themselves. You're like, I bet I hate this kid as a real person. I bet as soon as they yell cut, she's like, where's my diet Pepsi? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, we, we, for the most part, got like actual real kids from the middle school that we filmed at from the like the, we, there's a pool party scene half of the kids swim at that pool on weekends so like they're monsters in their own way you yeah. know which is that they're actually normal and yeah. don't give a fuck about being in a movie because they film themselves all the time <laughs> did, they, did they make you ever feel like um, the thing that would kill me from like a 13 year old if they were like this fucking guy takes things too seriously that would hurt me where I'd be like Sh shut up no, no. <laughs> so you grab a kid <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well it's like it, whoa uh, I, we, we had to tour a bunch of middle schools and high schools to scout the thing to get locations. We would go through the middle schools and it would be like, it'd be like 
like Dennis Rodman in North Korea or something. I mean, it felt yeah. like very that, just like people like coming up to me and just like touching my clothes and things. <laughs> it was all very, very sweet. It was like the Ewoks, like going yeah. to the land of the Ewoks. Um, and then we stepped into our first high school. A step into it, and I heard, hey, Bo Burnham, I'm funny too, you little bitch. Oh, dude, Jeez. From down the hall, and we were like, we're in high school. It was like actually incredibly that- thrilling. Like, and, and working with the middle schoolers was very fun. Working with the high schoolers was terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Like like 2018 high schoolers looking, you feel like the biggest fucking lo- I'm looking at like my like Adidas pumps that I have on. I'm like, I'm the biggest fucking tool could, in the world. Even what you're describing, I couldn't do it because what all you're doing is you're taking testosterone of those kids and just amplifying it like two notches and they're coming in like <gasps> yeah. fuck you. I tell you what though, I, the, I remember being young and always afraid of the older kids and like bigger people when I was little and then I, I went to the same school it was like, it was kindergarten through 12th grade okay k through 12 i didn't stay the whole time but i was in it yeah k through 12 i didn't stay the whole time Mm -hmm. but um i remember when i got to like eighth or ninth grade and you were in the different halls yeah i had to do something in the halls of the younger grades yeah and i went over there and made a concerted effort when a kid walked by to be like move out of the way jerk off you know whatever and he went and he went uh he went fuck you bitch and he he, (laughs) he called my bluff immediately and i was like I can't just hit him in school. Like, I, like yeah. he wins. <laughs> like yeah, I got kids three grades problem. lower than me. He was like, "Fuck you! What are you talking?" Like, I go, ah, oh, the, man, he, he was right. I thought he was going to just cower like you're supposed. Like I would have. <laughs> so when you went to how much in the high schools were you? Uh, we were there only a few days. Okay. So um, you were getting out, and you're like, last day among these monsters. Yeah, it was, but it was beautiful because it was like it, it, we felt like the story we were telling in there, which is that like high school is terrifying from an outsider from either end. Oh, if you're yeah. coming from, if yeah. you're looking back or looking forward, it's it's horrifying. And what? they're just they're so self possessed now. They're just they they just are cooler than they've ever been because I of instagram think. they have like hints is that yeah, what they're is? just like really really literate socially in a very quick way that you're not in on yeah. and like uh things being things are so old so quick for kids now that yeah. like the the amount of out of touch you are is just exponentially bigger than it would have been like you know yeah. 80s kids relating to 90s kids it's like 2012's kids relating to now are, are, are out of touch. Well, so I'm, I'm a 2001. I'm just gone. Yeah, yeah you're I'm just yeah. out I thought there. My, my my daughter has a. She used to have crushes on Vine celebrities. Yeah, and so when her mom will say something about like a new, you know, celebrity crushes Bella has, I go, "What is it? A Vine celebrity?" She goes, "There is no Vine." <laughs> yeah. Or what's the other one? What was the a Periscope? Like yeah, those things yeah. are coming and they're huge. That's another thing. They're huge. Yeah, it's wild. But these kids, these middle school kids, are built are born two thousand three. Jesus, at, two years after nine eleven. Yeah, they, I, and, and it's in the movie actually, but it's like in the background. There is a banner like of the twin towers. It's, it's, it's a thing, and it was a school like ninety minutes north, and it's like, oh, that is a historical event for them. Yeah, that'd be like the way they show like uh, Washington crossing the Delaware, like and on a patch <laughs> on a yeah, plate, like and you're crazy. like, look at that, that happened. They go, those used to be the twin towers, and you're like, oh man, it's I remember F- what my record crazy. was on Madden that year. I did a spot at the Boston <laughs> Comedy <laughs> Club the night before. Yeah, <laughs> I I woke up. Yeah, I was a freshman in college, and it's weird to think that these kids are just like that wasn't even dude two years. Two thousand three. Well, my, my daughter was born two thousand two. Yeah. Yeah. Weird post nine eleven kids. Yes, I'm a Reagan baby. What's up? Yeah, I say no to drugs. Bad. Eighth grade. I'm trying to remember. Christine said it was a fantastic year for her. You had a good eighth grade year. I had a good yeah, eighth yeah. Grade year. It was. I'll tell you, it was straight South Ola after that. But it was. Grade, yeah, but wow. eighth grade was great. I switched school, so I went to one school for grammar school till sixth grade, where I got like bullied yeah. and it was just shitty and then I went to this awesome school for 7th and 8th grade where it was just it was like an amazing school experience. Yeah. Small classes the teachers gave a shit. It was like very yeah. community driven. That's a, yeah. It makes you feel better about yourself. Yeah. Found it, my first gay friends. It, it is incredible too to see how socially progressive the schools are mm-hmm. uh, which I think actually like colors the misery of the kids in just a horrible <laughs> dose of irony. The fact that like you're walking by a poster that says like so Support trans rights, and you feel like a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. to feel like for the first time, like the administration and the faculty and your parents are constantly looking at you, yeah. hoping you're feeling good, and you still feel shitty. It's like they 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 would love to get a fucking swirly or have their head shoved in a locker. It would actually ground their pain in something tangible that's instead what, of being like way. the world is that. coddling me and I feel empty inside. Why yeah, the fuck? I've seen they have fuck. no structure. You know, they have no structure to. So believe, they don't have anything I, to rage. No machine to fight against. No, no. It's like, like really bad 
I think I think bullying was, I think bullying was is part of the fucking terrarium man. It's part of the mm-hmm. uh I mean I remember the kids it's part being of the ecosystem like, of growing up. I think I, I I was bullied. I was bullied and I eventually stood up to a bully in my life. Not all of them, but you know, I yeah. have done you have that kind of check off, oh, off your list. I've bullied and and been got fucking hurt by the person I, bu- you know what I mean? Like yeah. they hit me first or I lost the fight. You know what I mean? Like it was all part of like learning a thing. And then I knew I didn't bully people after that. Yeah. Time, but it's like, but it's like it, the bullying exists. It's just completely abstract. So instead of like, I got my head shoved in a locker, it's like someone made a fake Instagram account of oh, me yeah, and yeah. said, I'm a neocon. It's like, wait, what? Like you're, you're in seventh grade. Like you shouldn't like, that's not the way you should have to process that's, things. That's, so that's it's a like, grad school prank. <laughs> but it really is. And I, I was talking to kids about, cause like, it's incredible how much these kids are thinking about politics and just have to and they like lose friendships over their political allegiances Dude, you're in fucking in eighth, eighth grade, grade I mean in eighth grade was I being like you're a Dukakis kid like fuck off yeah. like what are we talking Dude, about that's so I can't funny. believe and I it's like, can't believe it like, are you and I was Bob talk- Dole loving motherfucker and I, and I, what are you doing I did like a little round table with the kids and talking to them and like this like 12 year old kids going like do you know what happened in Iran and I'm like no like <laughs> yeah. what? it's it's uh it's it's crazy. Is this is this uh, kind of a symptom from all the information being leaked into phones, be. where you can just read yeah, anything in a second? Where you used to have to hear someone from somebody, and then that they were your source. I remember one time if I you follow enough adults, you're bound to just as you're thumbing up the thing and seeing yeah. like, look at this burger I just ate, and like, about to crush this steak. There's yeah. eventually going to be like a news story, and you're going to you see fire and troops. You click it, and you read the thing. You know, but, that, I mean? that, but it, it, yeah, exactly. And it's also just like the whatever, like democratization of information, all this shit, which is like we all thought was like super cool that everyone is a voice. But now we have no way to discern discern which voice is important, where the hierarchy oh, boy, of like true. value yeah. or meaning is, and it's and it literally is like perfectly demonstrated in what a feed is you scroll through your feed as your kid you will see in no particular order your mother your your friends the president of the united states chick-fil-a you know what i mean it's just like these they're all being presented with the same amount of space a lot of chicks in in yoga pants taking a picture in front of a mirror yeah and it's and it's it's a lot to process and for kids at the end of the night to have to choose between like the back of your eyelids or everything in the history of the world crazy like you go you go crazy i couldn't imagine I, i go crazy with that i started Pissing sitting down so I could be in my phone like 18 months ago, and I was like, Something's wrong, yeah, you know, like this is. And then I just then it was just do more think, comfortable. Do you think cell so phones are gonna be, do you think cell phones are gonna be kind of like the new cigarettes where uh, mm. like 20 years from now people are gonna be like, You gotta stay off cell phones, you're gonna get cancer. Well, yeah, you know? and I always said, like, it's going to be, yeah, it's gonna be like smoking, and we're gonna. The, the equivalent of my doctor used to smoke will be like my shrink at a Twitter. Yeah. Like it'll be so cr- yeah. And you'll go, your shrink at a Twitter? Yeah. How, you were oh, being he was a taught, troll. No, he was like a Reddit troll. By someone that's yeah. like, that, do you it, think the that information intake has affected the curriculum for kids? Now? Do you think, is, it, is, is it harder? Is it a little deeper? Does it move faster, you think, school? Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, the, well, the, well, the teachers have decided like they can't ban phones. They just can't because it just it's just not tenable. Remember that so started. They, they have to. It's like dancing like, in Kansas. Yeah. You hear that, John Lithgow? <laughs> if you had a beeper in my. Uh, the, the, your mom had to come get it. They would if, take if it. it went they would there. isolate take it. it. Yeah, I got they a cell just phone. Can't. Yeah, I got a cell phone when I was eighteen. It was my mom's work phone. Yeah, right. she's like, "You're driving." Like, here you go. And just it's funny it. in punishment to take my daughter's cell phone away at sixteen years old. One of the big things, you know, also with the they scare the shit out of you in the world that something terrible can happen. That you need her to have her phone. You know, she has to be kind of tethered to it. Yeah, so we can get a hold of her. You know, what I mean, I get blown away. Like, you know, I get of nervous. I can't get a hold of oh her. My now. God, the idea of that. That if this was, you know, twenty five years ago, she'd have to get to a landline. Yeah. Like every you'd have a number. To, you'd have a number to call. I mean, but I that, would. That's the way they've sold the parents. Though it's like so funny. Yeah. It's like in case your child is anywhere, they need to get in contact with you in an emergency. And by the way, they'll have no privacy, and all of their information will be out for <laughs> everyone to see. And they'll perform their own yeah. lives every month. Okay, and it's like, wait, what? Like, like what the, was that the, second part? The, <laughs> yeah. But but, but the, the gulf between that and it. it we fell down the rabbit hole so quickly. It's so insane. I went from being in seventh grade with my chunky Motorola phone, impressing girls by throwing my phone over my shoulder and showing that like it wouldn't shatter on the ground. <laughs> like, that. Like, that was my move. Yeah, um, that's a good move, by the way. Yeah, that's a, a lot of faith in T-Mobile. See, both got yeah. a strong phone. <laughs> was, oh my God, he Kareem skyhooks it into the ground. <laughs> it doesn't break. But uh, yeah, it's 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 wild and like the the. Yeah, the crazy thing is, yeah. is that like the like there are like 
what what fucks me up looking at it, which is just so weird, is that there are like, and I've been to these places, you know what I mean? There are places in Silicon Valley, like, you know, with 300 employees, that they're like, the purpose of their company is to cater to the base wants of children. Like, like what they actually program is what kids want. Like, yeah. I don't know, a photo service where photos disappear after 24 hours. What would a kid want that yeah. for? And what is maybe, like, that's sort of legalized child pornography distribution sure. they can't be liable for it because it's disappearing after 24 you know and there's no mechanism to ask like is this good w- w- yeah. w- what do they maybe want are we making like because it's 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 just so it's it's so in front of uh, it's so ahead of us right now that we're like you said we're falling down the rabbit hole with no fucking direction it's so fast and like the just, decisions about kids like neurochemistry what? are being made literally by like Programmers. Yeah, I'm like, just saying, that, and they're not social geniuses. Like you've met these fucking <laughs> well, people. No, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, they come out like, to the punchline you know, sometimes in San Francisco. They're a rough go. You know, years and years ago, if your kid was like ahead of you on technology, you'd worry about him starting war games or yeah. something. Yeah. Whereas like now, it's it's just flat out that mm. it's like, are they giving their privacy away? Are, are they? Mm. Are your kids sending uh, child pornography basically th- yes. to each yeah. other and yes. stuff? And that's and they are ahead of it because where I think I know. Where I'd go, oh, I would have to check my daughter's thing. See, I know there's the secret apps that are photo apps. I know how to find those things. You know, whatever. Yeah. But I don't, she definitely knows 12 more things than I'm unaware It's always a step ahead. Like, I don't know if how to check if she has more than one Twitter or Instagram. You, you, know, you, you I, can't even use it. You don't even know what the names of the things are. Yeah. Like, you, yeah. you have to be literate in this whole thing to even understand the dangers. They're just so strange. You know, like, Fuck. so it's, 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 uh, let's go analog, dude. Let's wild. shut it all down. <laughs> I know. And it's so funny because that's what people say. Like, people say, like, uh, people always say to me, like, there's going to be a generation that unplugs. I'm like, yeah, some things are cyclical, like, for sure. But sometimes, like, a car shows up and there's fucking no more horses. Like, that, yeah. that's just what happens. Yeah. Like, so, uh, that's a good point. Things just change and they, and especially, like, you want to think this is cyclical and, like, a generation will unplug watch a fucking three year old with an iPad it's crazy you'll see that like these things are designed to appeal to us before we can fucking think that's what I said I, I had a bit about that that I did on Conan about just watching a little kid with a fucking iPad is one of the most terrifying things in the world because mm-hmm. they focus my, in my ex-wife yeah. uh, has and a they new, know how to use my it ex-wife it's has mind new, blowing my ex-wife has a new baby so it's my daughter's sister and well if we go to dinner or something the other day they occupy her by giving her uh, an iPad or the iPhone yeah and how I'll know if she has the phone, if I'm not with them, if the baby has the phone, because what she knows not only is to go to YouTube, they basically, for three or they set her up with the page that has all the videos of that cartoon or whatever she yeah, watches, yeah. but she knows how to pick a different one, go to a different one, and she knows if somebody calls and buzzes in that she has to, you know, if, if, if something comes up, says there's a text, she knows how to swipe it up to make go away, and if someone calls, she knows to hit the red to make it, she's three. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's it, navigating that's the nuts. interface of YouTube is insane. This is the this this is the image that like, and I and multiple people have said this to me. I've 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 I, I know other uh, people with young kids who have done the exact same thing. Um, uh, my nephew watches videos. Of, there's videos of um like. It, which is so demented that these people make these videos of parents that film their kids playing with toys. Yes. It's all about like Jeff's toys or yeah, whatever, and like unwrapping boxes. Yeah, yeah. So, so what happens is like, so now um, my sister will be like, you know, with her kid, and 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 he'll start playing with toys and be like, mom, mom, tell them about the thinking there's an audience there to talking to her going tell them about the uh tell the sub- tell them to subscribe or tell them about- and and multiple people i i've said have said that that their kids watch these videos and then and like they think they're in the Truman show exactly and that 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 is that is a real sort of like like depersonalization or whatever like that's like yeah. a real thing that can happen to people sure. and <sighs> like and i'm not saying but like that's it sounds like, it sounds like it sounds like a goofy thing yeah. I mean, but like but that's like a weird meta strange prison type of living which i think is what kids suffer from now which is they don't just live their life they also hover over themselves and watch themselves live their yeah. life they don't just approach moments they before they even have a moment they're wondering what that moment will be how it'll be looked back on how people react to how they look back like you know it's well, the uh, most on the nose example that is every concert yeah, yeah, exactly. Every exactly. Is and it's a parody 100, of itself, and it's like, no, songs. we're not supposed to become shitty New Yorker cartoons. You mean like, yeah. like the problem with like the country becoming the movie Idiocracy is like Idiocracy is not a great movie. Like that's what <laughs> no one's actually saying is that it's like it's kind of an on the nose shitty satire. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Be a little... that movie that it's insane how much that movie comes up just in conversation people on a daily basis everything this, well, we thought we'd be a better movie than this yeah. you know what I mean yeah. even yeah. than that you're, really you know, you're right exactly true yeah. I said that what was it come? oh with the UFC fights now yeah. 
uh, when the UFC, when the, when Michael Buffer is announcing, he go what he's for the main event. He goes, uh, we are here at the MGM Grand, brought to you by you know mojitos. When you're having a rough summer, make sure you drink a mojito brand mojitos. Yeah, fighting out of the red corner. You're it's like, gonna get, what? It's gonna get real dark, dude. Metro like, PCS. We, your cancer diagnosis is in. <laughs> brought to you by Pepto Bismol. You've got <laughs> prostate cancer. I know we have to get uh, we have to get Bo out of here again. And the movie Eighth Grade uh, out now, available on Blu-ray and digital platforms Thanks. on demand. Dude, it's so great to see. You. I'm yeah. so proud of you, man. I appreciate it. For Thanks. what that's worth, man. And I man, will say, I really truthfully, am. Jay, I I do remember how kind you were to me at that time. Oh, I man. remember more than anybody. I, yeah. I specifically say when people say who was a, a comedian that was very nice to you when you were young, it was you. You were so I knew so you were kind. Make to me. It. I never forget that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was now you just got to make a movie. Game. You got to make a movie called Forty One. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll be right back, everybody. It's the bonfire. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. No, 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 no. And it don't that was good. Flourish. Joe, you, I don't, I, I feel uncomfortable touching it after you just displayed that. Do you mean that? It's yours, dude. I have a John uh, Popper harmonica. Oh, cool. Well, then I'll take your fucking sloppy seconds. What do you think seconds. I did with it? I didn't lick it. I don't know. You played it beautifully. I thought you might want it. You talked into my nostrils yesterday uh, about how sick you were. And, and you uh, never stopped talking to my nostrils. I hate you. Who's I was this? sick. A cleaning lady just gave me a waggy finger no, no, no. She just what was that? Tumbled you? Yeah, what was that about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jacob, go fight her. Comes out, he goes, this straighten her shit out, Jacob. This is for the oceans. Yeah. Yeah, oh, he's going to throw garbage on her. Do something. <laughs> oh. He brought the trash can. He's going to throw garbage on everybody. Now he gets all brave. It's what a slobber knocker. You know what I didn't realize that this was Ben and Deb's studio when we were over there. Once upon a time. This is the original Ben and Deb studio. It does smell like sex. Oh, well, I don't <laughs> think it still does from that, Lou. Oh, that's musty fucking here, buddy. Mm. It's that radio Andy waft. Sex. Sex. Supreme. Sex sells. Sex supreme. Sexual supreme. More pictures of Deb. It was so hot in here, they had to take it out into the hallway. Remember? Uh-huh. We saw them yeah. out oh, the yeah. hallway there. Oh, yeah. Stretching out. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> I thought that we guy. lost you when you went outside to go fight the maid. Yeah, he went, you want this? Now eat out of it. <laughs> eat it. Guy, you got half a sandwich? Get oh, it, you crumb. Jacob, Get it, you goddamn crumb. Don't turn around. <laughs> you might fall in love. That was the day she broke her femur. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> my tight little ass is so wet waiting for you. Weird. Weird. What What was the actual reason she said that? I was reading. <laughs> oh, sure. What? Your live reading journal? Yeah. <laughs> what were you reading? Your own Instagram yeah. post? No, it was that thing. Remember when uh, I do the Gronkowski fake assholes, the fake asses and pussies? Oh, great. Oh, man. Man. Well, well, there you go. go. Yeah. Lou just traps you. Uh, she fake walks you right in. Pussies. <laughs> walks you right in and traps you. Remember fake asses and pussies? Oh, hey, uh, if you live in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, you can see Big J at the Comic Strip Live, Let's October plug. 18th through 20th. Okay. Uh, early, early surprise plugs. <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona. Get tickets to the All Things Comedy Festival, October 26th and the 27th. Big J doing a bunch of shows out there, including some theater shows. What's your fucking deal? The renamed oh. Ari Shafir storytelling oh. show. Then, oh. well, you can get tickets for that at BigJComedy.com. And also, don't forget to mark in your calendars October 3rd. 30th. Big J special as part of the Degenerates hit Netflix right at midnight or 3 a.m. They always drop it at like 3 a.m. Right, October 30th. That's midnight LA time. That's what it is. October Dan, 30th. Give me a little harp. Give me a little harp on your plugs. Yeah, turn off that. Let me let, let Dan play a harp up, and I'll do John Popper. The hands harder will be at the DC Draft House in Washington D.C. October 11th through 13th, and then on Sunday in Maryland, after that in San Diego, American Comedy Company, October 19th. I just realized, you actually, this is an instrument that you have to play. I thought I was nailing the John Popper part. 
You just sounded beautiful. You sound like an angel. That's American Comedy Company, October 19th and 20th, Friday and Saturday. For tickets and all their tour dates, visit DanSoder.com. And of course, don't forget Blues Traveler's new album, Hurry Up and Hang Around, is out this Friday, October 12th. And Bur- Bo Burnham's movie, Eighth Grade, is out now on Blu-ray and all digital platforms. Uh, that was great to talk to Bo. Man. Yeah, man. I've never met him. Um, what is this Fred Durst story about him lying about lyrics to sleep with a girl? I know, that's too vague. <laughs> too vague. Too vague. You're Sorry. vague. James in Texas called. If you don't want to hang on the line, I don't know if we'll be able to get to that today. That was so cool to talk to Bo. It did. It was a bum out talk though. He was like, "We're old. The yeah. young are the future, and they're crazy." That's crazy. <laughs> the okay. young. Is, the young is into technology. The robots. They don't like you. I don't know if I look at this generation and go, "They're going to fix everything." <laughs> yeah, not at all. Well, you got to let one go. Maybe their kids. One generation has to be let on. Yeah, one let, one generation's going to suck, and then the next one's going to be like, we got to fucking clean Isabella's this Isabella's children are going to turn it all around? Yes, your grandchildren. That's well, what I'm she's saying. just swiping left and right. A little teaser for tomorrow on the Bloop. last Oh, man. We went through the documentary, swiped. Uh, we ain't through it yet. About. Yeah, we ain't through it. It's going to be a two-parter. But we're having fun with it. Turns out we Faux need to show. go a lot longer than we thought we were. Are you what? trying to be popular? I was desperately trying to not... Be seen in eighth grade, and he's saying they're all. I was trying to be ready. liked by they everybody. Are all it's yeah, crazy. but I, I wasn't like. Um, I just hoped everyone liked me, and then my friends were like kind of the bad kids, so I just didn't want to get bullied by them. I just think there was a thing uh, as part of growing up that would. Look, people went too far with everything. Obviously, it was gluttony and everything, but I mean, just like bullying in the loosest usage of the term, just sort of regulated things. Well, I'll tell you what okay. it did. If, if, it also drove like you towards can, if passions. You're, if you're a fat kid, I don't know if it's important for everybody to go. It doesn't matter. You're beautiful. You're an amazing person. It doesn't matter. It's like, well, also for your health, you should probably not be a fat. Like, well, Christine, I wish, Christine brought that up with the plus size model industry, where they're like praising these women that are, you said, dangerously overweight. Yeah, yeah, I saw an ad that they're the moderately that really hot pigs. Upset. Every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you said what, Christine? I saw an ad the other day that got me really upset. Like, I think it'd be like putting an anorexic woman up as a model and saying, "This is beautiful." I'm like, "No, this is a sickness. This person needs help." Yeah, you know, or a. Drug Drug addict, like it's crazy. Yeah, but you also know. I mean, with an anorexic girl, you're like sad and bummed out. But like a really heavy girl, you're probably like, God damn that food, though. I see an anorexic girl. I go, you know what she needs? A little shot in the chops. <laughs> <laughs> a little. I mean, what was? I the see that everyone goes obese girl. Oh, you know what she needs? A little boobettes. I like, uh, <laughs> I like Popper just steps in and he goes, Oh, I know how to heckle anyone. Anyway. Dude, that's one of the funniest things I've ever... I thought about that 20 minutes after him leaving. I yeah. uh, was still laughing at that. Any, <laughs> put up any female that goes, You can heckle. I goes, You can't heckle Florence. Watch. Oh, my little... Bit. You're fat. Yeah. <laughs> when I hear that buzzing in my noise, it's a bully calling me fat. <laughs> we never really went into that because that John walked in. No, there that was so ad. much... Yeah, this ad upset me. Do you have... Ew. Yeah, that's dangerous. It's oh dangerous. God. It's absolutely dangerous, and it's somebody promoting uh, like sicknesses case, beauty. Let's we'll see a pillowcase full of dimes. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, uh, <laughs> you take me to the bank, and you're like, oh, man. Today. Yeah. Is she, oh, she's trying to find a coin star machine to get rid of all that? <laughs> it's an ad for clothes. It's like a clump suit. It's zero, zero to 40, which is fine. It's not like women that are size 40 shouldn't have clothes to buy it's just a weird thing to normalize her cankles are the th- thinnest thing on her body but you're yeah you're saying like they show this and they're like hey this is she post that with like hey do you need help are you an oh do you have a food addiction like call this number yeah it shouldn't be modeled as like uh, you know yes bitch be big be so bold. unhealthy be have tingly feelings in your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, diabetes. Yeah, that. girl, get the bottoms of those feet round. Heart failure. <laughs> yeah, you know, there you sexy. Go. Do you like having strokes in your 30s? <laughs> then be big, you bad bitch. Do you sweat butter? <laughs> I yeah. love it. <laughs> Do you have memory loss because your heart's overworking? <laughs> you flash and you pass out? <laughs> Just go be bad, you big bitch. <laughs> <It's> like, so, <laughs> do you like chocolate so much you don't give a shit about the right side of your face? Yeah. Have you woke up driving a car? <laughs> be big and beautiful. Are your utensils not big enough? Yeah. Does your piss smell like a bag of sugar? <laughs> Are you in twenty four seven ketosis? 
<laughs> like, you're right, dude. It's like, there's a point, right? This is fucked it's up. It's sick. It's all just it's like, like everybody. It's like the way it's like the way booze, like beer commercials, eventually in the '90s had to start being like, please drink responsibly. Have you ever had to eventually be like, and- have you ever thought, why don't they make socks wider? <laughs> <laughs> Do you find? Do you find sweatpants suffocating? Be big, you bad bitch. <laughs> you big, beautiful, bad bitch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you Christopher a dog? <laughs> because you didn't realize your yeah. Bijan Friche was on the couch. Did your niece <laughs> you have cats in your fold? Yeah. <laughs> Did you find a remote in a fold? Be big. Did be you... beautiful. Did your niece run out of thread trying to make you a friendship necklace? Yeah. <laughs> but it is, man. It's like the way that the beer commercials were like back in the eighties. They're like Spuds McKenzie. Even the dog gets drunk. And yeah, then in yeah. the nineties, they're like, please drink responsibly. <laughs> Turns out this shit just rots your liver. Don't get yeah. a dog drunk. Yeah. Stop <laughs> feeding animal. alcohol to party animals. There was no such thing as a party animal. Oh, doing Jaeger. They can't Meister. process alcohol the way we can. When Jaegermeister called me on that tour yeah. to say no jokes about drinking irresponsibly <laughs> or any thing sexual and alcohol related I mean, crazy that's how guinness was when i worked for guinness i could be se- i could do sex jokes oh. but the, if i go if i even went she came over we had a few drinks like just like some line yeah. like that and they're like no nah, nah, nah. yeah they did a thing where you, know, you could fuck this girl on this joke all you like but do not give her alcohol <laughs> you, you do it she better be stone sober you better enjoy the ride of jaeger but she better be stone sober i'm like buddy. why do these things go together a lot they're like, uh, why have you found the found too much alcohol <laughs> and sex to be problematic uh, we straddle a billion dollar fine lines it's been a thing it's been a problem but we can't but drink response Cinco de Mayo <laughs> Cinco de Mayo it was weird to work for a large alcohol company because they were like here's what you can and cannot say like you cannot say this or you'll lose your job and I wasn't trying to go back to waiting time. I know you but it's like it's like only their <laughs> one thing you're like can I draw a picture you're like can I draw a picture of Muhammad like yeah yeah, yeah oh, absolutely fun. do you sure. want to like fuck it you should probably fuck it <laughs> like, what? I don't think I want to do that at all they got no draw Muhammad shot. squeeze and tits and just <laughs> fuck, fuck it, it. <laughs> make them have a big old dick and big titties and you're like well, okay yeah, can I say like I've had too many I had so many Guinness he looked good did you, did you not say that <laughs> <laughs> Do not say no. you drank enough Guinness to fuck the cartoon trans mom. How you, about I drank enough Guinness to draw Muhammad? Like, yeah, still, no. No, This sorry. has to be a sober act. Sorry, dude. I would never do that sober. When you're drinking Guinness, you just better be in a nice fog-covered field in a wagon <laughs> in an itchy sweater with two of your Irish friends. <laughs> Laughing and drinking. Oh, dude. It's so funny to see who's like, because there's people that are like into Guinness. And I was like, the Guinness... Ambassador, <laughs> the Guinness. Can, you, can you look up a, a list of Guinness myths? There's so many great. They say ones. there's fish, uh, fish gel in it. They said that like, I've always heard there's meat in the bottom of the barrel. There ain't no meat. It's rats in the barrel that Hell make yeah. it to be a certain way. Well, I met Fergal Murray, the brewmaster of Guinness, and it was quite a time. He was covered in rats like a Tory what if I, video. He was all rats in a man suit. <laughs> what if I told you that they came together like Voltron? <laughs> he was made of uh, 700 rats. Fun, fascinating fact. That's actually the new Guinness point. The your point. These are the myths? Yeah, but they're not. Guinness is good for you. Well, it's alcohol. Guinness is black. I it's knew not. It's actually These are good ones. amber. I knew it wasn't black. Yeah, dude, it was pretty crazy. I was more for like Guinness cures cancer or something like uh, that. No, they used. To, it's funny to see all their. You know, we were talking about commercials. This is what led us to here. But the, all the old commercial ones. Look up old Guinness commercials because they're like Guinness gives you strength. <laughs> That's how they marketed it. They're like, do you have a long day at work? Drink a couple Guinness. The Irish workforce has alcoholism out of control. I'm not stupid to, uh, to think. Wasn't there ads for cigarettes saying like they're benefits for you? Yeah, back in like the 30s and 40s and shit. Yeah. They said like smoking. Look it up. It's what Bo said. Like finding out your therapist had I mean, a Twitter. You start hacking up and coughing and having a lot of stuff. Pretty few months into smoking. Like, did anyone ever make an uh, ad for it, like, months into it that was like, oh, guys, you know what? Like, I don't know if it is not good for those, you, but it's not Look at the print ads. Yo, you, when you start smoking, you're like... Well, I'm saying how many months in before you're like, whoo, I actually am feeling smoking. Not many. And so ha- to have commercials at all, like, this is good for you. It goes, no, you've, if you're smoking, you already know that this, is, this sucks. Within five years of smoking... No matter how many commercials are on, you feel it when you breathe. You're like, oh, it's a problem now. 
But was this the mind frame different where they're like, it's not a problem. That's actually strength. Those are strength wheezes. There it See, is. Look, Guinness for strength. Guinness for strength. So just drink this and get strong. There's a there's, If you drink enough of it, you think you could lift anything, though. Uh, Christine, can you look up which country? I believe it's uh, it might be in like Bermuda or something where there's a myth that if you drink Guinness extra stout, it's good for like um, your your potency for your cum. Like make <laughs> a shot on the nuts and a point to Guinness will make any load bear you a strong boy. If you drink enough, you'll cum Guinness. I go, all right, now I'm going to drink this Guinness and you just smack me in the nuts. Ready? Go. I'll tell you why I hate it. Oh. I don't like any beer that's not carbonated. I don't even understand it. Oh, what? You mean that swamp water that they had me drinking for two years? I don't understand. Uh, yeah, it was actually delicious. I enjoyed Guinness? it. It was, I, dude, I enjoy, I like Guinness, so I was fine with it. You there like did, it too? Yeah. There I did like get it. a point where like I didn't like it. It's I was flat. Drinking, I was drinking three a night, three shows a night. Yeah. So that's nine Guinness. Sure. And then it was going out drinking with the crew afterwards. Guinness. More Guinness. Uh, no, dude, I would sneak Bud Heavies. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I got caught by my boss what is that? at Guinness, uh, like a Budweiser oh, original. Oh. I went to the bar at the at the hotel in Ireland when we were there, like drinking in Dublin, and I went down and had a shot of Jack Daniels and uh, Budweiser. And the guy from Guinness, I like, came out and was like, "Oh, what are you doing?" I was like, ha, ha, ha. "I was just seeing how like, shitty." I have, to, is. I have to check and see if the other one sucks as it much does. as I remember. Oh, this is gross ass rice beer. And then the whole time I was like, "This is so sweet and delicious." Like a gerbil at a water thing. You just taking a little bit of it. He goes, "You have a shop, and now you're going." He goes, he "Goes, oh, disgusting. It's just." It's terrible. I can't no. believe I'm doing it. Oh my god, I, I'm punishing myself. Oh. I'm so sad to mask that. <laughs> At least time you take a little more of the shot. It's oh god, it's so gross. I'm I'm not savoring it or anything. I'm just yeah. really I'm relishing in how gross it is. When I uh when I tried I tried quitting drinking one time and I got like five weeks and I felt really good about it. And this is before I read the book, uh, uh, the easy way to quit drinking. It was like I felt really great about it, and then they're like, Hey, Guinness wants you to do ten more cities. And it was like, you know, you know, you know, you know that point where you're like making money off comedy, but if you don't have another side job, it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's like really hard. So I was at that point where I was headlining, not making a lot of money at all on the weekends and then trying to do this thing. And I was like, all right, I'll do 10 more cities, but I'll try not to drink. For some reason I thought I did, I didn't have to drink. I was like, I can They'll put some iced tea in my cup. No, just do a fake sip. Just like take it and be like, oh, hey, the first night we're in Boston, I do uh, the three shots. Shock on it. <laughs> Dude, it, uh, this is how much I just completely jump back in and I'm so wishy washy. We go out, the president of Guinness shows up, this Irish guy that just took over, and he's like, oh, I'd like to have a pint with you. Let's go out and talk, you know? And we're just at this bar and he just like puts down two beers, and I'm like, well, I have to drink this beer because this dude's in front of me. So I drink the beer and then I'm like, let's have another one. And we have another one. And I'm like, do you want to do a shot? And he's like, well, I'd love to do a shot. I go out and get fucking hammered with this guy. <laughs> like hammered. I hadn't drank in five weeks. And I was like, you got a pack of cigarettes on you? What's up, dude? And I was like, you fucking tiny mick. And by the end of it, I go, this sausage finger fuck is my new best friend. <laughs> I go, he runs Guinness. Anyways, I'm the ambassador. Suck my dick. <laughs> dude, it, it became, I started blacking out. I'm, I'm going to be at the DC Draft House this weekend. I can't go to DC without thinking about when we did the Guinness shows. I got blackout drunk and just smoked cigarettes in my hotel room. <laughs> Like it was the 70s. And then a week later, I called the hotel and I was like, there's a, I did my best official white guy voice. There's and I was an like, odd charge from my yeah, car. I called, I go, there's a strange charge. And all I did was say this. The guy goes, yeah, it was a cleaning fee. I think you smoked in your room. I go, that's funny. I don't smoke. And he goes, oh, well, that's weird. <laughs> you gotta put back on my credit it's Catch card. 22. They always have to give it back. They always have to give it back. If you call them out, like, I didn't smoke in my room. They're like, you know, you're calling me a smoker. You're calling yeah. <laughs> you the You're saying I'm a smoker. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna call me a smoker. How dare you? Hang on, hang on, you're stressing me the fuck out. Hang on. Uh, um, let me get a cigarette. I mean, I don't even smoke. Um, uh, yeah, it was bad. You call me a smoker. And right then, to my ears. And then I was taking that drinking energy on the road when I was doing comedy. I was drinking. I go to Atlanta all the time. I went to Atlanta all the time. 
fact, they canceled the Atlanta Guinness gig. I was pretty bummed about it. Danny Sodes McKenzie? Dude, hell yeah. Duff man. That's what all my friends called me. So a fucking knapsack full of Hawaiian shirts and jams. I go, dude, you ready to party? All you need is a Miller Lite. You know the best thing about Hawaiian shirts? It's day gear and sleep gear. Yeah, it's pajama jams and day jams. It was... Uh, Can't it, see puke on a weird landscape shirt. Guinness is owned by this company named Diageo. And they're like a major alcohol uh, company. They own like Johnny Walker, Jose Cuervo, uh, Smirnoff. They own like most major brands. They have an office over on 45th and 5th. And if you're an employee, they have a full bar. Lou, don't jizz in your pants. You can walk in and you're not allowed to tip the bartender. Do they need an engineer? (laughs) (laughs) And you can drink whatever you want. So... I would be like, always. if you're an employee of Diageo, you can go have a drink at the bar when you want of anything. So I went and just had uh, Johnny Walker Blue mm-hmm. like at the bar. Just like, all right. And then, and by the way, it was when I was doing a Christine Monday night. Just, Christine just creamed her jeans. <laughs> yeah. But that was a Monday night when I was doing a show at Caroline's, and I showed up drunk to Caroline's. I was like, what's happening on my arm? And they're like, it's nine. How are you this drunk? And I was like, I don't buy the at like five o'clock. <laughs> and you, you don't tip. You just sit through the only time, dude, the most awkward thing in my life was, and you'll know this as a cigarette smoker, was leaving to go smoke a cigarette and then trying to get back in without looking like a raging alcoholic. Because <laughs> I left and I was like, all right, bye, everybody. Yeah. And this downstairs, like, I'm going to go back up and have a fucking Guinness Black and another <laughs> shot up. And then go, just trying to just come back in. Be like, rules. Yeah, be like, is Christine here? I was, that was the girl that I knew that worked there was Kristen. And I was like, can I talk to Kristen? <laughs> She's totally cool. I mean, back in. Uh, she started going, <laughs> trying to grab the door. Just had to back in. Yeah, she tried to close. You put your foot in. No, 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 no. no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Shh, 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 shh. I'm her name right. Did I say, did I, did I say something mean to Andy, the bartender? I thought we were friends. I told him I was going to smoke. He said it was cool. I think I left my wallet inside. Do you mind if I smoke? <laughs> do, you mind if, yeah, do you mind if I smoke on the stairwell? <laughs> yeah, what? Uh, give me one thing. Just do, <laughs> give me one thing. Just do one thing for me. Do one of the things I'm asking. Why won't you do one of the things for me? I'm meeting you halfway. The most pathetic weekends of my life were where I was on the road and I was like, I'm not drinking this weekend. And then you're talking like that. And they're like, you have media in four hours. And you're like, what's your media? You're the one who's fucking media. Whatever. I'm going to wake up fresh as a daisy. And you wake up and everything's sideways. I'm going to go puke this okay. I want to love you and I want to move to Syracuse and be with you. I think we should be together. <laughs> Let's just take over this little radio station together, me and you. It goes... Ah, uh, sorry, our guest seems to be a little weird. This is Woody and the Scooch on some of this. Why don't you guys turn these microphones off and let's just be together? Can we talk like we did when, when I walked in? Ah, we're getting a little uncomfortable here. The fifth caller is going to get Dance. free tickets to Dan's show. I don't even want to do a show. I want to get a little cottage with you, too. Can I show you me? <laughs> uh, coming back with five tickets for Dan Sodder. He's going to be at the Funny Bone. Don't know what his act's about. You've seen him on Guy Code. He's a little out of it right now. Can I show you me? Can I show you me? I want to show you. I want to be with you, though. Um, what a fun week, buddy. What a fun a. live week. Dude, fun live week. Fun uh, guests. Next week, we're together Monday, up uh, across the country Tuesday, and then Wednesday, it's you and a guest host. Mm-hmm. But Thursday, we got Timmy, Timmy Dillon. Timmy Dildons. Watching Unswiped, the second part of the Unswiped. Swiped. I know, I just realized I screwed that up. You're unswiped. Can you not? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, go get tickets to see Big J at BigJComedy.com. He's going to be... so plug-heavy. Plug-heavy today, dude. Edmonton, Alberta, thing. Canada. Fine, October 18th to the 20th. Let me do one plug, comic strip. <laughs> BigJComedy.com BigJComedy.com Dance Order Dance Order This week and tomorrow DC Draft House And Baltimore in If you're in the Baltimore area Come on out I said it like I'm from there. Baltimore, Baltimore. Uh, Magoobies That is Sunday night Magoobies DC Draft House And Gillis uh, will be with you Thursday, me. Friday, Saturday Big old Shaner will be with me Gillis on the roll Gillis I love you uh, so DanceOrder.com Our podcast Please download Down. it and Subscribe Rate, review Check out The film crew's in here today When we had Bo and, and John Popper But please go check out the video on YouTube. This film crew is so fucking awesome. They cut it together. They make it look great. You know. It's cc.com slash bonfire YouTube. Correct? On.cc.com slash bonfire YouTube. Bonfire YouTube. Just search Comedy Central Bonfire YouTube. Just get there. You can get there. Shit. It is lit. We love you. Dot cube. Dot net. Crackle, crackle.